Defensive Player of the Year, first in blocks, first in, in rebounds. And you also have to say that he also, in game one, not only did he score the points, but at halftime, 14 points, nine rebounds, five blocks, set the tone. Atlanta, they have been a bad playoff road team the last three years. Nothing as bad as what they put up here, the 43-point loss in game one. So let me do something I've done for the last two years. Turn to Hubie and say, <laughs> how do they find a way to win a road playoff game? Well, this is all about your three perimeter guys. They have to be able to shoot the basketball. Now, in game one, your two top scorers, Johnson and Crawford, you can see, struggle. Then you add Bibby because he's, he forces the defense to be stretched. Now, that allows Horford and Josh Smith to work underneath. But the three of them shot six for 27, 22%, and they were forced into nine turnovers. So give a lot of credit to Orlando's defense. The guys trying to turn it around for the Atlanta Hawks, the three seed in the East. The veteran point guard Mike Bibby with Joe Johnson, third team All-NBA, Marvin Williams, Josh Smith, and Al Horford. For the home team, the undefeated in the playoffs magic, Jameer and Nelson leading them in scoring with Vince Carter, Matt Barnes, Richard Lewis, and first team All-NBA is announced today, Dwight Howard. Speaking of first team, here's Heather Cox. You're so sweet, Mike. Now, how does a team react after losing by 43? Well, for Atlanta, the hours since that loss have not been filled with player-only meetings and motivational tools and lots of ranting and raving. Players told me they left the loss behind when they left the building. Mike Bibby said there's nothing left to say. We cannot miss that many shots again. On the flip side, the team that won by 4-3 using every tool in the book. Stan Van Gundy came to practice yesterday armed with the history lesson. He told his team over the last three years in the playoffs, when a team has won by 20 or more, they have lost the next game 63% of the time. Mike, two very different approaches to game two. Yes, different indeed. We heard that in the speeches pre-game. Monty McCutcheon tosses it up with Mike Callahan and Mark Davis. Those are the three men assigned by the NBA to work this game two of the Eastern semifinals. You see the dominance of game one on the bottom of the screen there for Orlando and the specifics of how they dominated. Howard goes inside to try to continue that good feeling and great stat line from game one. Well, they want to get him started, Mike, and I like the fact that he starts towards the middle and then he goes baseline. And when he goes baseline, he's so strong, he gets you on his back and he gets a high percentage shot. Joe Johnson has been struggling with his shot the last four games off the mark. Here comes Jameer Nelson. 24 points per game in that first series against Charlotte. The sweep and picked it up in game one with 19 points and his first two here tonight. Mike, he's on a tear. Right now in the playoffs, he's shooting 51%, 46 in threes, and 89 on the line. They're the same kind of numbers a year ago before the injury. If he slips the pass inside the Horford who missed, now the rebound, and here come the Magic. You cannot afford to miss anything in the lane tonight if you're Atlanta. The open threes, the open jump shots, and lane play. Oh! Nelson throws it up. Howard throws it down. 6 nothing. Well, Bibby's got to do a better job on Nelson. And then when they bring Jamal Crawford, he or Joe John, somebody's got to play him so that he cannot make all of these fancy passes to people that are moving on the baseline. You roll basketball. Five to shoot, rotated to Marvin Williams, guarded by fellow Tar Heel, Vince Carter. There's the game's first foul coming on Vince. Now, Jameer Nelson is at the top of his game. He's leading this team. Everybody has stepped right in. They are stronger at the point guard position right now because of his leadership. He's back, he's healthy to where he was a year ago before the injury. Then also, they are getting major points out of Petrus and Barnes at that small forward position without calling any plays. They're getting 16 to 18 every night out of that position. There is Michael Petrus. He's set the big factor on the defensive end as well as hitting those threes. We saw the stat line as Williams shot the first free throw. Single digit points five of his last six playoff games. Well, Mike, they got to get him going. I mean, he's a young guy with a ton of talent. In the playoffs, 13 points at home and only five on the road. What's that all about? Howard slips it to Josh Smith. Dwight Howard, who in that first playoff series with Charlotte Hughes, he was much the 
discussed foul trouble. He was down. He was frustrated. Boy, that week off, he has come out with great confidence game one and here in game two. He's quicker, Mike. I don't know why. He looks quicker to me. I thought in game one he was excellent in his movements because he would give you two moves and then he would explode. Now tonight he's off to a great start. Or for it from the outside. Mike Woodson, the coach of the Hawks, uh, talked about it. It's a, it's a bit of a challenge for Horford. He's really in the body of a four, even though he's 6'10", when he's playing against Dwight Howard in that pivot spot. And the offense really suffered because of it in game one. Lewis the miss. Howard couldn't squeeze it. He wanted the foul. This is where the Hawks were good in game one, in transition. Well, they're one of the better transition teams in the league. They're fourth in scoring points. So you got to go here right now. You got the major mismatch. Oh, I like that. Smith finding a way to score over his buddy Dwight Howard. I thought he got popped pretty good there, okay? <laughs> Could have been a three-point play. But I like the fact that he took the challenge. Had the mismatch, take him to the rim. Those two guys, very good friends, played AAU basketball against each other in their high school days. And Jameer Nelson continues his terrific play. He and Howard have combined to hit their first five field goal attempts. Well, we know that Atlanta does all the switching. Jameer Nelson, Carter, and Riddick, they have taken them off the dribble to the rim. That's got to change. If you're going to switch, you must keep the ball, Allen, in front of you. Beat two by Smith, who took the three-point shot out of his repertoire for the regular season, but is shooting more deep outside shots in the playoffs. Nelson right around Bibby, but Johnson bails him out on defense. Third team All-NBA is announced today. Joe Johnson to Williams. It's Carter on the board for Orlando. An understated area. Defensive rebounding. Orlando, one of the best in the league. Rashard Lewis, would you love to just sit and watch him shoot jumpers all day? Oh, I love that long frame, and he goes out and shoots it. And right away, Mike Woodson sees his team not handling it on either end, taking the early timeout. The Magic have opened six of seven from the field. Well, Rashard Lewis, we know, during the season and in the playoffs, is getting off six threes a game. You've got to get to him and force him to put it on the cup. Here in game two, a reminder that great playoff action in the next three days here on ESPN and ABC. Tomorrow is game three in Boston with the Cavs and the Celtics, followed by game three in the West as the Spurs will try to get on the board against Phoenix. Coverage begins 7 Eastern after Sports Center on ESPN tomorrow night. Well, game one here, 43 point win for Orlando, the third largest game one margin of victory in the history of the NBA playoffs. And Hubie, the two stats at the bottom really jump out to you. Right, points in the paint. Why? Atlanta is number one in the league at 46 points. How about the fact that they were really pummeled by 22, then the rebounding, a plus 18. Now remember, Orlando is the number one defensive rebounding team in the league, so you don't get many opportunities. Inside the Hawks go, and Joe Johnson gets a field goal in the paint, making it 13-8. Where on this end, Hubie, the defensive end, must Atlanta be more yeah. sound? Well, first of all, Bibby, any time that he's playing on the dribble, I, with Jameer Nelson, you got to stop him. If they're going to switch, Jameer Nelson has broken them down now at least four times since we started. And that, that, that's handy to Richard Lewis. So $20 at Starbucks. Here, take whatever you want. That's right, because people forget back when he played in Seattle, Mike, they used to post him on that side all the time. Bibby rattles home a three from the top. He's had some hot and cold shooting playoff games. That's been a barometer to Atlanta's success in their seven-game opening round series win over Milwaukee, which was a struggle. They had to win game six in Wisconsin and game seven on Sunday in Georgia. Really? Well, he blew his open again? Really? Well, this, this is a team we know that they led the league in makes 10 a game. We also know that they led the league, all right, in in uh, playoffs now. They're also right at 10 a game. So number one in attempts in the playoffs, 27. They're 10 for 27 as we move along through the playoffs. Let's see if they keep it up. Magic have hit eight of their first nine field goals. Bibby's got nothing going on. Power the block, shot clock violation. What you'd like to see with Atlanta is more movement. In game one, they ran movement on one side of the floor. They would have three guys on the opposite side doing a screen down and what we call different type of shuffle cuts. 
and it kept you know, Orlando it. at bay defensively. But then they went away from it. And now tonight we have not seen it yet either. The more movement you have against Orlando, they now you break down their predictable rotation. Howard. Johnson helping Horford a little bit, but Dwight.